Welcome everyone, my name is Elijah. I'm an environmental educator at Letchworth State Park. And today we're overlooking the Genesee River, which gets its start in a pretty unique place. In Potter County in Northern Pennsylvania sits the small town of Gold. And around Gold, Pennsylvania is what we call a triple continental divide. The only one found east of the Mississippi River. This triple divide is an area where three separate watersheds all meet at the same place. A watershed is an area of land where all groundwater and precipitation eventually end up in one central body of water. A single drop of rain that falls around Gold, Pennsylvania by falling a few feet in any one direction, it might end up in the Allegheny River, eventually to the Ohio River, which flows to the Mississippi River and empties into the Gulf of Mexico. That same drop of rain falling just a few feet in another direction might end up in Pine Creek, eventually the Susquehanna River, which empties into the Chesapeake Bay in Maryland. Or that single drop of rain might end up in the Genesee River, flowing north about 160 miles before emptying into Lake Ontario. And about halfway along that 160 mile journey sits Letchworth State Park, where the tall towering rock walls hold in any potential floodwaters of the Genesee River. But as the meandering river leaves the village of Mount Morris, there's no more tall gorge rock walls to hold in all that potential flood water between the village of Mount Morris all the way north to the city of Rochester. Over the course of history, on average every seven years, there would be some pretty significant flooding events that would affect all of the farms and communities and businesses between Mount Morris and Rochester. So plans were drawn up. And in 1948, construction began on the Mount Morris Dam. Today, we're lucky enough to be joined by Tom Wenzel. He's a park ranger and natural resources specialist with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. These are the professionals that manage and operate the Mount Morris Dam. And Tom is going to be able to give us a little bit of insight into what exactly goes on at the Mount Morris Dam. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Wenzel. I'm a park ranger and natural resource specialist here with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers at the Mount Morris Dam. Uh, you can see we're sitting on this beautiful day out here with this wonderful snowfall that we have uh, in the area. And we're, today we're going to discuss a little bit of why the dam is here, why it was built, what we were authorized for, uh, the role that this dam plays in the Genesee River watershed in the basin here, and also just kind of show you what the life at the dam here is every day. So we're going to go over that a little bit. Well, let's start first of all with the Army Corps of Engineers. You're probably like, well, who the heck are the Army Corps of Engineers? Well, we are a federal agency that works under the U.S. Army and the Department of Defense, and we are at a Civil Works project. So we have over 500 dams throughout the nation that we operate, and we also maintain about 12 million acres of federal land. And so we got involved with rivers because that was vital to the defense of the nation actually to control the waterway so that's how the army got involved and that's how we're doing flood control projects we were built between 1948 and 1952 so we were, we're getting uh, over 60 years old now so we're getting up there in age and this dam is actually one of the largest all concrete dams east of the Mississippi River. We're 1,028 feet long. So if you look at it in terms of football fields, we're over three football fields long. So if you look all the way over there at that long end, that's a heck of a sprint for a touchdown over there. We're also about 240 feet tall. 
and we're also called a gravity dam. So a gravity dam means that we will use our tremendous amount of weight to hold this here. So you see the gorge walls, you're thinking, yeah, probably the, uh, uh, the walls are what holds this dam in place, but it's really not, it's our weight. And we weigh 1.6 million tons, which is about the equivalent of 300,000 adult elephants. That weight, it's a good thing because it holds us right here in place and resists the force of the water that's pushing against the dam. Now also when we were built, if you look all the way across, that's Letcher State Park right over there on the other side. And at that overlook is where the concrete plant was to build this dam. What are three materials that you would need to make concrete? And you're gonna need rock. And a lot of times rock is you're gonna need is, is limestone. And the limestone that was quarried for this dam all came out of Leroy, New York. And put together with the second ingredient, sand. You need sand. And the last ingredient you would need is water. So that's what they mix together all over at the other side of the park over here and mix that concrete. Well, they had these big towers that had these big massive buckets that would swing out across and they would drop that bucket of concrete. Well, each bucket was about seven to eight cubic yards of concrete. And guess what? We have about 750,000 cubic yards in this dam. So they had to sometimes pour 24 hours a day for two to three years straight to build this dam. And so to give you an idea, has everybody here seen a concrete truck on the highway? Well, a concrete truck is about 10 cubic yards. So if we look at it in terms of concrete trucks, we actually poured over 75,000 truckloads of concrete to make this dam. So if we lined up all those theoretical concrete trucks at one time, they would stretch from the village of Mount Morris where we are today and stretch all the way to Chicago. So imagine that, that is a lot of concrete that we have here at the Mount Morris Dam. So why don't you come join me? We're gonna go inside. We're gonna talk a little bit more about what we do every day here at the dam, uh, some of the operations uh, that we do and some of the historical flooding events that we've had. So come on in and join me. Okay, so here we are. You might see this big stretch of stairs behind me here. This is part of our job here at the dam as we do daily inspections. I don't know if you can hear. I hear a little bit of drip of water. Well, what that is, is not the dam leaking. We have what are called weep holes. And they're these little holes that go out into the concrete. They go all the way out in the rock. So right where you see where the staircase is, we are actually in the gorge wall of Letchworth Gorge right now. And so that rock is primarily shale. A lot of water passes through that shale and it puts pressure on the concrete of the dam. So what we have are those weep holes. It allows that water to trickle in. And so sometimes in the spring, it almost sounds like a waterfall gushing in and it goes all the way to the bottom of the dam where the water gets pumped out for us. So this stairs, looking up behind me, it's about 220 stairs. And then if we, it, um, down below me is another 110. Well, if I were to go all the way up there, there's still another 150 stairs after there, about 160. So we have 455 stairs in total, and that's more stairs than what's inside the Statue of Liberty. So that's part of our inspection. So every day we just want to make sure that everything looks good, all of our equipment's in operating condition, and we just want to look at things like what the, what the water's doing, what the pressure's on the dam, and uh, uh, also just take a look at all of our operating equipment, maybe make sure light bulbs are on and working properly because we want to make sure that everything is always 100% operational. We have over a mile's worth of tunnels in here, so we're in one of those tunnels right now, and this is one of the ones that we would walk through to do an inspection here. We periodically have divers come in and check out uh, portions of the dam. And then we also do upkeep and maintenance of this dam as well to make sure that it's just in prime operational condition uh, at, at every, any given time. Now, we talked a little earlier about being a gravity dam where we rely on that tremendous amount of weight to hold the dam in place. The concrete itself at the base of the dam is about 213 feet thick. You know, that's a lot of concrete, very thick. So uh, you can see the temperature stays around 48 to 52 degrees all year round. It's kind of like a cave. There's just so much concrete that everything is so well insulated. So we even get, we'll come walking through here in the dead of winter. It never quite freezes. We still see mosquitoes down here. It's kind of interesting to see with the, the dam being that thick is we will stay that constant temperature. So we have a couple levels that aren't as thick, they get a little bit colder, but the, the levels that are down towards the bottom of the dam, like where we are now, stay about this temperature all year round. We do see bats once in a while. Uh, it's not a very common occurrence, but we do have them. I've had some chase me down the halls before, but especially more in the summer. Luckily, the ones that we have here at the dam all seem like it's a healthy population. All right, everybody. Well, here we are down at the bottom of the dam now. We, we said we're going to talk a little bit about what we do on a 
daily basis and why the dam is here and what we were authorized for. So we kind of hinted a little bit up top that we were authorized only as a flood control project or what we call flood risk management projects now. So we're here to minimize risk of flooding. We're not here to necessarily prevent it, but we're here to minimize any damages that can occur from flooding. And so we do get lakes quite often throughout the year. So not, you know, we don't have a lot today. We have maybe a five to seven foot deep river down in the Genesee today. About, I would say any from one to six times a year, we're gonna get a pretty good lake built up that could be about 75 feet deep or so. Um, sometimes even a dozen times or, or more a year, we get what I call a pond backed up where it might come up 20, 30, 40 feet that we're holding back water. Well then, about once every five to 10 years, we get about half full. And then once of about every 20 to 25 years, we almost fill up and get to the top. In Hurricane Agnes, we had over 18 inches of rain throughout our watershed and throughout the Genesee River Basin in a very short amount of time because it was the remnants of Agnes coming up through from the Gulf of Mexico. And so we came within four feet of going up over the top of the spillway of our dam. And we were 96% full and the water did not spill over the top. We want that water to stay back because we have what's called a trash boom behind the dam that stops a bunch of logs and debris from coming up the dam. And if we let that water go up and over the top, it can take that debris with it and be a little bit more dangerous. So we will open up what we have called conduit. So behind me um, is where the conduits of the Genesee River actually go through the dam. So we have nine tunnels. Now today we only have about two and a half gates open for the normal flow of the Genesee River. During Agnes, at one point, we had almost all nine of our gates were open. So a lot of other people ask us, like, well, how do you make the decisions how we're going to operate the gates and how many gates are we going to have open and what are we going to do in the river? And that's a great question. And what we do is we coordinate with our engineers and our scientists in our Buffalo District office. And we also coordinate with the National Weather Service. We look at what the forecast is going to be, and we talk with the National Northeast River Forecast Center, and they tell us what's gonna happen within the river with how much rain we're supposed to get or how much snow melts. So that's, we take all that data together, and that's how we are going to determine how many gates we have open. And so we have nine sets of gates that are all hydraulically run, and they're just big steel doors that will block off the flow of water in those nine tunnels that we have. And I mentioned today we have about two and a half of our three gates. So behind me, you'll see, you might see some bubbles here, and that's one of the gates that we actually have open. Now, we talked a little bit upstairs as well that we were only authorized by Congress for flood damage reduction and flood risk management. So that means we're here for that flood protection role and that's it. And we also said we're unusual being a dry bed dam and they're specifically usually for flood protection. And so we weren't authorized by Congress for anything else. So we get a lot of questions like, well, you're a dam, so you must generate electricity. Well, that's one thing we do not do here is generate electricity. And one of the reasons for that is I would have to have a hundred foot deep lake all year round backed up behind this dam to get enough water pressure to turn turbines and generate power. Well, there's a couple things that prevent us from doing that. One is that's gonna take away almost half of our flood storage capacity. Doesn't really do much good for why we were built. And also we have what's called the 1989 Genesee River Act, which basically takes the Scenic Rivers Act and applies it to this 17 mile section of gorge. And you wouldn't have beautiful Letchworth State Park anymore if, if we had a big lake backed up for power generation. So that act was passed specifically to make sure that we weren't gonna retrofit this dam for power generation. Once we release water here at the Mount Morris Dam, when it goes through these tunnels where the bubbles are coming out, it takes about 12 hours for this water to travel from here to Avon, New York. And then it takes about another 12 hours to get from Avon up into Lake Ontario. So sometimes we get requests, hey, can you shut down right now in Rochester? We can, but it's gonna take 24 hours until you might even notice some of those effects there. We get asked about um, maybe what kind of e uh, ecological impacts the dam uh, has on this Genesee River Basin here. Certainly any engineering project is gonna have uh, an effect on the ecological impacts of the river. But thankfully, especially where this dam is because of the waterfalls that are in Rochester, we don't have any species of fish that have to come up this far upstream to spawn. So we're not affecting that. And being a dry bed dam, we actually don't have a lot of water flowing through very often. So I've seen, uh, I've done inspections of those tunnels down there. We talked about those conduits. I've seen snakes and crawfish and and uh, I've seen toads and frogs and fish swimming in there. Periodically, we have divers that come in and do an inspection, and they may come down in this little area behind us here. It's called the stilling basin of the dam. So it's actually about 20 feet deep, and there's, if I could take all that water away, it would look like a big concrete pad. 
and that's called the stilling basin because it kind of slows the flow of this water down. We also have these walls that are right here behind me called training walls, and that keeps down on erosion right here near the dam. Well, we'll send divers down in there and they do inspections of those baffles down there. They're big concrete blocks to slow that flow of water, and then they're gonna come in and check out those tunnels. In the early 1980s, uh, we had a diver down there. All of a sudden, he came running up out of that tunnel. He was out of breath, and we're like, well, what's, what's the matter? Are you hurt? Is every, you know, everybody okay? He said, yeah, but he said the world's biggest beaver was chasing him up the tunnel down there. So what that tells us is uh, when we have low flow water, we've had wildlife go right through this dam, so it's not much of a hindrance for wildlife right here in this local area. We have an environmental stewardship role, which is basically taking care of the environment. And here at the Mount Morris Dam, we have about 3,800 acres that we help manage with Letchworth State Park um, that encompasses all the federal land here uh, within the Letchworth Gorge. And so um, part of that mission is uh, invasive species control. We'll do wildlife management, things like that. There is another little dam down in Mount Morris that's uh, owned and operated by Rochester Gas and Electric. Over here, you're going to see there's, a, you know, this area downstream of the dam is actually a great awesome spot for waterfowl migration. You can see all the geese we have out here today. We've had some common mergansers. So this is a great, great spot for waterfowl to come and hang out before they're going to head south or they may stay here all year if it's a warm enough winter. And one other species of animal that we've seen to kind of thrive right here, right downstream of the dam with these geese in the summer is we see spiny soft shell turtles. And oh, they're one of my favorites to see down here. And they actually have a soft leathery shell so they're kind of a different turtle that you're not used to seeing but they love muddy rivers and so with the sediment that occurs down here near the dam it seems to be a nice spot for them and we can see them sometimes rising and swimming here through the stilling basin area so there you got a little bit of insight of what we do here at the mount morris dam what the army corps of engineers does and who we are and also what we do on a daily basis and, and why the dam is here and, and what we do for flood protection for this local region. And so we were glad to take you on this ride and glad you had an opportunity to come see the dam with us. Thanks so much for joining us as we were able to get an insider's look into the Mount Morris Dam and learn how vitally important this structure is to all the communities downstream of the village of Mount Morris. Be sure to stop and check out the Mount Morris Dam on your next visit here to Letchworth State Park. You can enjoy views from an overlook just inside the Mount Morris entrance gate of Letchworth State Park, or you can head on over to the Army Corps of Engineers side of the gorge, enjoy their visitor center, and check out some of their interpretive programs as well.